Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit to hang out with all of y'all. Uh, I'm going to throw the Bear Cave leg of the Scythe Moat in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can reply with that. Uh, at present moment, not a lot of people here in the chat, which is okay. Uh, that happens from time to time. I was expecting this to be a light night in general due to the amount of incredibly cool people doing 24-hour streams today. Lots and lots of rad folks out there. Well, Culinary Disaster is here in the chat. Appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, there's a lot of people doing uh, their 24 hours, extra live streams, hanging out, doing their thing. I was supposed to make an appearance on a stream today, but that person decided to cancel their stream, which is okay, and I understand. But hopefully I'll still be able to uh, to have some fun and hang out uh, uh, with y'all tonight. Uh, and also, some people might be sitting there with a drink, hanging out watching a little TV, having a moment of quiet reflection, perhaps joyful, perhaps resolute to the work that has to come. But at a certain point, perhaps today, no matter how you're feeling, you have some sense of relief, a little bit of relief. Obviously, not you know, not exactly where we want to go. Uh, not there yet. Work to be done. Still, months left of shenanigans. Just whole periods of who knows what. A road ahead, but at the same time, uh, take comfort in the fact that people around the world learned more about Gritty. They may not have heard about Gritty when Gritty first arrived, but because of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania specifically being in the news, Gritty is in the news. And more and more people had to ask the questions, hey, what's Gritty? I'm an Italian person and I would like to know about Gritty. Hello, I'm French, and I'm going to ask in French, who is Gritty? And some uh, reporter in France had to explain who Gritty is. And I think that fucking rules. Uh, that was one of the smiles on my face today. A lot of smiles on my face today. But that was definitely one of those. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, this is the intro portion we're hanging out. We're going to see if a few more folks want to join us tonight. As I said, I don't know if we're going to get an audience this evening. It may be a very small stream. This might be a, this might be one of those streams where more people watch it on YouTube after the fact than watch it live. And that happens now and again, and that's okay. Um, but I am, as I said, hoping that a few more people decide to join us. I might retweet myself a little bit here and there. Uh... And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm working on a very cool kit, and I know people are, are generally pretty interested in this. Uh, we've gotten some work done. I got an arm here, and I got an arm over here, because uh, we started with the arms. Uh, this is the camphor. It's a 2001 kit. I've also got part of a leg, so that's fun. A little bit of a leg there. Uh, still uh, healing from a cut, uh, unfortunately, a cooking accident, but doing all right with that. Got a Band-Aid on there. I have a spare Band-Aid this time in case this one gets caught on plastics as I'm combining them and it gets weird. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I'm just like hanging out, just kind of like doing my thing tonight. Uh, it's one of those like, uh, I'll say this before we get into the actual building, which we will soon, but I did want to give it a, a chance for people to come into the stream Hopefully, a few more folks will decide to join us this evening. But I did want to uh, uh, say right off the bat that I woke up in just a bad mood. Uh, just like a confluence of like a bunch of different things, but also specifically uh, my time being wasted, which I do not particularly enjoy. My time was very wasted. And let's go ahead and go in the overhead as I'm kind of talking about this. Um, but yes, uh, my time was extremely wasted today and... Uh, I am a, a, a person that enjoys a schedule. I love a schedule. And unfortunately, I don't really have much of a schedule these days because there's just like a lot of stuff going on that is outside of my control. And I have no ability to keep a schedule. But oh, I love a schedule. So make plans today to do something. Going to get it done. Like, not that I'm excited about it. Not that it's anything important, but it's stuff I got to do. And that gets delayed. And I'm just like, well, then what am I even, what am I doing? Why, why is this happening? And it was frustrating because there wasn't a like, oh yeah, well, it wasn't that, you know, whatever. Or, 
Oh, sorry. I didn't even think about it. Like nothing. No, no, even offer of not even a weak apology. And that just, yeah, it ticked me off. I'll, I'll, I'll freely admit uh, I ended up in a bit of bad mood. And then, you know, news came out. And suddenly I'm not in that bad of a mood. Like it was like, oh, cool. And then it was that thing where I'm like, but I'm still in a bad mood about this thing. I just can't like, I can't let it get to me because it wasn't that big. It was just like, a, oh, I'm frustrated more than anything else. But like it pales in comparison to some sort of relief that I'm currently feeling. So at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, all right, that's fine. Like that's going to be a fine thing. I'm going to be okay. Um, that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, just feeling like, all right, I think this will be this will be an okay thing. Uh, hey, Lastbrook, welcome, welcome. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, a thing that I will repeat time and time again is the work isn't done. It's nowhere near done, right? We don't just like pat ourselves on the back and say like, yeah, good job. There's more work to be done, uh, you know, particularly in Georgia. Uh, gotta get that, gotta get that going. Uh, the runoff in Georgia particularly is important because who the fuck knows? The work is, no hey, Aristophan, the work is never done. But who the fuck knows, man? There's gonna, there's a lot of twists and turns left. Um, uh, so it is, uh, it is certainly, I think, more important than ever to get that Senate flipped because, hey, a Senate and a House, like, controlled... So it's like, you know, that's not, that's not nothing like that, that, you know, work can get done that way. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I am hopeful and being hopeful is pretty great. Got to give it up for being hopeful. If you, if you got, if you got like the possibility of like shit happening and there being like positive stuff, like that's pretty good. I'll take I'll take some positivity if I can get it. Because um, the alternative is just, you know, to give up and to give in. Uh, and that's not what we do. We, 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 we don't have time for that because there are people that are counting on us. So, yeah, I'm feeling okay about that shit. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of things to be happy about, things to go forward with, like to feel good about. And then, like... Then we'll we'll take it from there, uh, including working on this kit, uh, which every so every time I mention I'm working on a camper, I get responses from people being like, "Oh, I love that kit. The screws are a nightmare," and that has been a consistent thing of people just being like, "This is a fun kit, except for uh, I cracked this part or I messed this thing up. Uh, hey, don't screw it too tight or but don't keep it too loose," and it's like. Oh, okay. This kit is definitely a. Uh, this feels like a kit that is somebody's favorite because it was like a kit they worked on. Uh, it, for, you know, they really like the kit, or it's a period of time. Not only even that they like the kit itself, they like the 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 mobile suit, and it's definitely a product of its time, uh, which is fine by me. I'm okay with that. I think that's perfectly all right uh, to work on a kit that is got some rough edges. Uh, I mean, I picked it. Uh, this is a kit that I was like, I could have built the high grade. There's a high grade that came out a couple of years ago, but why not have a snapshot of a time in a place? Like, let's build a kit from the year 2001. Uh, that's kind of like a gap period of my building. So anything from the early 2000s, I'm definitely interested in. The, the kits that, I think the kits the most uh, the period of time I have the least experience with, I want to say that, is the late 2000s. I don't know what came out then. I mean, I built a couple from that period because I've built some stuff from like um, uh, uh, um, Seed and Seed Destiny. So I have a, I built a couple kits from that era. But I've mostly, most of the kits I've built on the stream have been from the 2000 teens or later or the mid to late 90s. I've built a lot of kits from that and their re-releases in the early 2000 teens. Um, but I definitely have not had as much experience uh, working on 
kits like this, like this kind of uh, this area, and then later. So I'm I'm definitely looking into that. I'm looking into getting some like late 2000 kits because it would be a fun thing to just like figure out like what were they getting right, what were they getting wrong, like what steps, did, what flubs happened, like what was like this was a positive change, but like they didn't quite hit it here, you know. So I'm gonna be looking at uh, mobile suits from that era and trying to like get a few that kind of you know that I haven't built that are uh, you know that and try and make sure I don't get the re-releases because the re-releases sometimes are just oh yeah we, we're printing those again and the booklet has a new date on it uh, sometimes those are actually updates of the work and yeah it's kind of cool to check those out um, we'll talk about it later in the uh, second hour when I talk about anime I watched in the last two days I straight up skipped the show um, because it ended on such a heavy note that I don't think the show could handle. Um, the idea that the, uh, uh, so it was, uh, I'm standing on a million lives. Like there are characters like these heretics are going to be hanged and the episode ended. And I was like, Oh, I don't know if these folks can handle the responsibility of that. This show, I don't know if this show can handle something heavy like that. So, Maybe I won't watch this episode. Like, I'll watch it another time. I was just like, uh, I'm a bit joyful right now. And, like, there's, like, a song in my heart. And so, like, maybe I don't want to watch this, like, show that I don't think can necessarily handle heavy topics in any way, shape, or form. Or maybe I'll, like, take a pause on that one. And I think I made the right call. Also, I'm standing a million lives is it that good of a show? I mean, it's an art. There's some concept I like. It's a thing where it's like, the thing I like most about that show is that it is like kind of bleak in its uh, main character. It's got one of the least likable main characters I've ever seen in a show. And I kind of like that. Like, I'm kind of into that idea. Because I don't know if they're going to even try to give him a redemption arc. I do think if they try to give him a redemption arc, it's going to feel incredibly forced and be a big bummer. Uh, so I'm like kind of interested to see where that where it goes. I don't know. But uh, how are you all doing there out, out in the chat? Um, uh, today was taco night and it was pretty great. Um, my, uh, my tongue is still like a little numb from uh, using some hot sauce, which is not my general go-to, but it felt appropriate. Uh, it just like, I just felt like having some hot sauce tonight. Uh, it's just not my general uh, vibe. Uh, better than I was yesterday, says Arista fan. Hell yeah, Arista fan. That is the spirit. Uh, it is better than before. But yeah, it was taco night. And uh, that is uh, one thing I think that... Um, my dad is appreciating me being home is uh, apparently taco night had gone away for a bit in the house and now it's back. Um, but yeah, had some tacos, hung out uh, today, got some stuff done. Uh, I got, I'm, uh, I'm setting up a meeting tomorrow uh, to chat about some stuff. Hey, I'm going to try to get a little work. See if I can get a little bit of work in uh, in November this month that we're in currently. Just try to get a little bit of, uh, of job stuff going, some new work, uh, some freelance stuff, because uh, it's, uh, it's rough out there. Look, this time of year is already rough for freelancers, let alone during a pandemic, let alone like, you know, when, when I'm not in my home city, so I can't even like pick up anything like local uh it is it has been a weird time last broke woke up for a pretty good nap hell yeah pretty good nap is good glad to hear it but yeah i'm gonna try to pick up some freelance stuff um make sure that i can take care of some things um as i said my tongue is numb right now and uh i am i don't know if you i don't think i've ever talked about this I'm a super taster. I got one of them tongues that has uh, the um, uh, uh, 
my, I really, I got a bunch of, uh, I'm not going to stick my tongue out. I got a bunch of grooves in my tongue. Got a bunch of crevices in there. And I got really spread out taste buds. So like, uh, what it means for me is, it's not like, oh, I can like remember the things I tasted. I don't have that thing. It honestly just means that um, uh, anything spicy or hot, you know, like the heat or anything like that, uh, just messes up my mouth. It really sits with me and stays with me because it just gets in to all the grooves in my tongue. Um, and it is often not a fucking problem at all. It is often totally cool and no problem whatsoever. But sometimes, like when I have tacos and I put some hot sauce on there, uh, it's a real problem. Because the other thing is, I didn't grow up with any kind of heat. Like, I'm talking like my condiments were like steak sauce was like not not a, a household thing. Like, never put anything hot, never had anything spicy or hot. Just didn't grow up with it. And I feel like when people say like, oh, as you get older and your taste buds diminish, you start craving more and more spicy things because you are trying to like uh, you're, you're trying to like catch up and, and, and hit not, you know, not catch up, but you're trying to like, uh, make up for, for your shortcomings there. Uh, but if you haven't had spicy things, if you're not a spice boy and you don't have any, uh, you know, if you're not, this is not your deal. Um, as you get older, I think it's just like, it, it, it's not that my taste buds, my taste buds are like now, like, what are you doing? What are you thinking about? Get get out of here. What did you put on this? What are you eating right now? So it's a slow going process to kind of just train my, my body to enjoy the heat. Like, I know I'm never going to get into, like, stuff that is painful because it already is. I just want, like, flavor. I want, like, a little, like, flavoring and excitement and that kind of thing. Like, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm not looking to, uh, to, like, shock myself and, like, punish myself with food. That is never the goal. Especially when, when it's taken into consideration that food is my vice. It's the only vice I have, y'all. I don't do any drugs. I don't drink. I eat. So if food, if food is my vice, and I certainly don't want to punish myself with the vice. I want to eat f things that I think taste great and I'm really into. Uh, all right. So we did only did one of these likes. Now we're going to jump to feet. This is the thing I really honestly very much dislike about kits from this era is like some of these things I'm doing two at once, but other parts I'm not doing two at once. So I'm going to do the feet. And then I'm going to go back, and then when this leg is done, there's a bunch of parts I'm going to have to do from scratch. Instead of just doing all the different components at the same time, it's it's part of that. Like, I understand why they're doing it, um, but, like, it, it's still, to me, frustrating. Because then I just have, like, a bunch of pieces set aside that I can't do anything with yet until I finish this leg, and then I can go back. and then. But then there's a lot of parts I'll have to, like, dig up and do again. And it's just, yeah, it, it, I would say this is a frustrating element of kits of this era. But let's uh, let's put some feet because, you know, it's a mobile suit. It's got feet. And we got to put some feet on there. I mentioned this and, like, you know, I think it's OK. It, it's not the end of the world, but this is going to be a, a light, lightly attended stream tonight. And like that's kind of a bummer. Uh, I would have appreciated, you know, always appreciate more people. I know that uh, I this is an extra life. Uh, night. It's a popular extra night life. There are going to be more extra life streams happening with people, but tonight is, you know, there's just some, there's just not a lot of folks out and about. And I, I understand that. I think that's okay. I'm not mad about it. Like, we'll probably end up rating someone that's doing an extra life stream. I don't know yet. We'll see, but probably. Uh, but, you know, I, I always like having people hanging out and watching the streams. It's kind of a bummer when we don't have a crowd. Uh, but that's okay. It happens. And then, uh, well, we'll just, uh, we'll just enjoy it and have some fun. It is fucking warm. It, it, it got warm again here and we're not, we don't have the air conditioning on. 
Uh, but the breeze has ended here. We had a breeze coming. Uh, and it is warm in this room. Uh, partially because I've got my computer just, you know, on and near me. But just in general, it got hot again. And I don't like it. It, got, it was cool there for a while. And I was pretty dang excited about how comfortable it was here in this uh, place. Uh, ooh, did I? I need two PCEs, and I only see one PCE. Oh, there's more over here. Okay, great. I got really nervous. Uh, air conditioning is not on, Lastbrook. I know you don't understand. Um, when it reaches a certain temperature, you turn the air off because you don't need it on, because the air... Uh, because you just open a window and the cool air comes in and it's pleasant. And it, there's only a couple of months where that is the case here where I'm at in South Carolina. But it's currently, it has been actually pretty nice. But I will say right now, uh, I'm sweating in this bandana. I'm uh, definitely got the sweats going on here. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll deal with it. But it is... Uh, it is definitely not as comfortable as I would like it to be. Start working on these feet. Um, yeah, I, I said this uh, pleasant outside. I don't understand. Yeah, I know, right? It's weird. But that is that is true. Uh, it's fall. And sometimes fall is nice for some people. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, I mentioned before, I was originally going to be making an appearance on someone's stream this afternoon. That, unfortunately, fell through. And so I did not make an extra life appearance this year for anybody. And that's okay. Uh, they were having lots of connection issues. And they ended up calling their stream early. Uh, and But they had, they'd, they'd hit their goal. So they weren't feeling too bad about it. But yeah. I, uh, all right. We're going to move on here. We need some of these. Putting their legs together. But yeah, overall pretty okay day i will say you know work more, more work to be done as always but feeling okay uh caught up on a, a show that i had kind of bounced off of but i kept hearing everybody fucking talking about it and i was like all right well i'll go back to jesus kaisen i am now caught up on that show i'll talk about that briefly when we get into it when it's time to talk about shows uh we will we'll chat about this stuff. Good evening, Professor Zoidberg. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here. Uh, it's a pretty laid back stream tonight, but uh, happy to have you around. So yeah, I am. Uh, I'm caught up on the show that I was wasn't sure if I was ever gonna really watch, and I'm into it. I, I'm digging it. I'm hoping that uh, we take a break from what seemed to be a bit of a pattern. Uh, Extra Life snuck up on me today. There's been so much stuff going on. Caught some of the GB stuff and some smaller streamers. Yeah, I, I caught some smaller streamers. Caught a little bit of Giant Bomb. Um, caught a little bit of Kind of Funny. Um, finished up a thing that I made that may or may not be included. Uh, Harold's not here, so I can say it because he'll probably hear it. Uh, I made a thing that may or may not be part of uh, Loading Ready Run's uh, Desert Bus, which is coming up. Um, they kind of try not to do the same weekend as Extra Life, or around the same time as Extra Life, so, um, I made something that might get included in that, in that show, which, or in that stream, which would be cool. Uh, I think Vinny showed off that kit at some point. You talked about kit building. Uh, we haven't talked in quite a while about kit, uh, model kit building, uh, but we have talked in the past. I mean, Vinny and I haven't chatted much in a while uh he has been known this was in the early times uh when i would stream uh, uh when i first started streaming Vinny would pop in now and again uh yeah he's definitely has experience as a model kit builder um and we we certainly have talked about model kit building um uh but i think that and it seems like Vinny is a uh action figure collector you know uh, masterpiece transformers and i think he kind of moved into really vibing with doing like woodworking uh and that kind of home projects 
uh, more than model kit building these days. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got to, I've been really happy. I've been, I've, uh, on, uh, giant bomb streams. Uh, I, inter I worked on, uh, Dan record worked on his first ever model kit with me, which was really fun to like work on a kit together. Um, and then, uh, uh, on, uh, the waypoint streams for, for vice gaming, uh, Austin and I got to do a little bit of, of building, which was really fun. Um, we worked on some chibi, some SD kits. Uh, yeah, once he bought a house, he learned, he, yeah, he leaned into woodwork crafting. Yes, which is what you do when you have a house. Like, I have contemplated, now, my dad doesn't have a lot of tools here, but he does have some stuff. And I have contemplated doing some sort of project in the garage because I have a laptop. I mean, I could just drag out my PC to the garage if I really wanted to, but I could certainly set up my laptop and a couple webcams pretty easily out there. So I've contemplated, he doesn't have like everything I would need to do the kind of thing I'm thinking of, but like, you know, it's got a tool shed there. Um... Oh, yeah. Uh, Austin Rules. Well, he's just such a great dude. Um, I didn't see any of the Giant Bomb Among Us, but I, I imagine those to be good. I know the people that we're going to be sitting in are real cool. But yeah, uh, and then there was well, one of the Waypoint streams. Um, they worked on some Lego. Uh, but yeah, it was really fun. Like, we hit, we hit, I hit it, in, I, I showed up with two SD kits. Um, uh, and I was like, Austin, if we like, let's pick an incentive. Like if we raise this much money, how about you and I work on these kits? I brought tools with me for hit so that he, you know, he didn't have to worry about anything. And he was like, oh, that's a really good idea. And then we hit the incentive. I just basically said like, Hey, if you want to see Austin and I work on some, uh, some gunpla, we need to hit this sound of money money. And we hit it all, like pretty quickly because I knew it would be something that people would be jazzed about, but it was also very selfishly a thing that I was jazzed about because I wanted to do that with Austin. Because uh, we, we didn't get a chance, you know, to collaborate much. And I was really happy to do that. But every time we did, I, I love working with Austin and any kind of stuff, be it comedic wrestling or, uh, or having him on my panels at PAX or anything. Also, it's just such a fun, funny dude. It's a pleasure to work with. All right, there's our leg. Look at these big, beefy legs. I love, I love them. I love these boxy legs. This camper, I mean, it's just, it's just such a boxy kit. It's just got like, it's just got big legs and and big feet, and I enjoy that about this thing. And the arms have like this, like the weird holes in there. The the like the divots in it is just such an odd thing. It's just got strange details. We're going to have some weird times with the chest getting that together and getting the uh, the braiding of the of, of the hosing done. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean. Uh, that is a fun dream. Uh, I have. Um, I have only had a few people on as guests. And uh, when I'm streaming, I haven't had any guest streams come through just because the bandwidth here for my internet isn't that strong. But, um, uh, you know, I had Aaron Trites uh, during uh, San Diego Comic-Con. I did a stream and Aaron lives in San Diego now. So Aaron came by and we had a chance to uh, to cut, hang out in my hotel room. And I had brought with me two little kits. They were Steven Universe kits. They're... Uh, they were terrible. They're very bad kits. They're like fake Lego kits, uh, and I got them on sale at when the toy when Toys R Us here in the states was going out of business. I, I got these kits, and they were really on sale, but also awful. Uh, I threw them out. I didn't take them back with me to New York because uh, uh, they were awful. But it was really fun to have a guest and do a build. And then I've done a uh, Pax panel once. It only happened once. Uh, where I did build uh, build with bear workshop, uh, it was a Lego challenge, and I had Abby Russell and uh, Charlie Chu, who works for Oni, uh, and is a great dude. I love Charlie. Charlie's one of my favorite people. Um, and we just they built the same little Lego kit, uh, which was round one, and then round two they got to customize 
because I had brought a bunch of Legos in a Lego briefcase, and they got to customize the kits, and it was fun. Uh, the thing that I should have thought up was that we were at PAX during the day, so kids came, and that was weird. I, I, di I definitely did not uh, think that kids were going to come, and I totally should have thought of that, and it was fine. We didn't, like... It, we, we, we kept it PG and it was okay. Um, but I hadn't like, g generally, kids come to my panels and I'm like, oh, weird, kids are here. And this one I was like, oh, yeah, duh, kids would be here. Of course they would. It's a, it's a panel. Like, I advertise this as a panel where we build Lego. <laughs> uh, uh, I was at the panel. It was really fun. That's so nice of you, Rich fan. Yeah, that was a good time. Do you have a link to the Sega Saturn kit you built? Uh, do you mean like uh, a link to it, uh, well, on Amazon? Or a link to the YouTube archive of it? Let me know, uh, Zoidberg, what you're looking for. Uh, to purchase, great, easy enough. Uh, yeah, let me look at my uh, uh, my order history and find it. Uh, by tomorrow, I will have that PlayStation, which is the second in this line. But the Sega Saturn, uh, here is the link right now. Uh, the Best Chronicles Sega Saturn. Sega Saturn. Uh, right here is the Amazon link. Now, I am sure that this is available other places. Um, uh, other places like, you know, like USA Gundam Store or Gundam Planet deal with other model kits. That's where I got it. I got it through Amazon. Um, but as I said, I also... Uh, this week I was it's like, I think it was like Wednesday. I was just feeling like, I just want to buy a cool model kit. And I bought the other one. Uh, so, so we need D6 here. So I bought the, uh, the Sony PlayStation, the original Sony PlayStation. And I always try to make sure I'm being accurate in this because it's not the PlayStation 1 O-N-E. The PlayStation 1 was a re-release and it's a different looking kit. This is the first PlayStation. Uh, and there is there, you know, there are differences between the two. So for accuracy, I want to make sure I am saying that I purchased the, uh, um, that kit and I'm excited to work on it. Okay. So let's put this part of the leg together here. Some odd looking parts. Hey, Harold is now hosting the stream. Thank you very much, Harold. Uh, you just got that burning Gundam. Hell yeah, Tony. That rules. Harold, yeah, thank you so much for the host. Appreciate it, my friend. Welcome, welcome. Happy to have you here on the stream. Uh, I was... Uh, scratch my ear. I apologize. Uh, I was saying, Harold, and you might be interested in, in this uh, bit of information, that I don't know if they're going to use it, and I'm not going to say what it is, but I sent to uh, Graham... Mr. Graham Stark, a this or that that he is possibly going to use during Desert Bus. And I, of course, as I said, will not tell you what that is about. But I did make a this or that because I needed something to distract myself with. I just needed, I just needed something fun to do because I was just like not in a good spot on Wednesday. Uh, so I worked on that. And uh, I think it turned out good. Uh, but yeah. Oh, your cup noodle's coming. That's awesome, Harold. Happy to hear that. Hey, we're almost done. I mean, we're, we're not almost done with this leg, but we're getting pretty good ways done with this leg. We're, we're getting in there. But yeah. Um, who knows? Yeah, I, I am definitely excited for Extra Life. It is a, is a good time. And I... Uh, I can't, I mean, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing how this, this one works. I think there'll be a lot of... Uh, people feeling bad about crosstalk. I think we'll get plenty of crosstalk that people will just have to get adjusted to, but it should work out okay. I think they'll they'll figure it all out. And there will be plenty of people who are like... The one thing I'm wondering is my assumption, Harold, uh, you know, because they did a bunch of tests. So here's my assumption, right? My assumption is that the JVC player, the player for Desert Bus, I'm going to guess that's going to be at the moon base. 
and drivers are going to come in and there'll be like a driver and a technician who will be like keeping that alive. And there'll be like a very limited staff. And then they'll have like a driver come in and out and then they'll have people on the shifts will be appearing on, you know, from their homes. Uh, and I could see I could see a changing of shifts to allow for like. Well, let's have, you know, let's put these people together because if they're from the same place, like, let's say, Corey and Ian. Corey and Ian live together, obviously. So you can have them at the, on at the same shift because then that's one less thing that you have to deal with. I don't know. I don't know how they're, how they're going to do all this. Uh, uh, for folks that haven't seen, uh, Desert Bus is a... It's more than 24 hours. It's hours and hours and hours of nonstop someone sitting, playing uh, the uh, the game, uh, uh, the Sega CD game, uh, Desert Bus, driving, and they raise money, and it's all for child's play, and they do all kinds of different activities, and there are bits, and there's giveaways, and raffles, and it is, uh, the vibe is very fucking good. The vibe is positive and awesome, uh, and it uh, it has been ridiculous, and it continues to build and grow. Uh, they've raised a ton of money, given away very cool prizes. Uh, there's all kinds of running gags from year to year. Uh, their test stream uh, showed some potential. Yeah, Harold, I mean, like, so some of it is just, like, obviously, well, one of the things, folks, is that they're be a huge staff of people there uh it's american truck similar made by a crazy person in the 90s well so it's a it is one mini game in a collection of mini games that were penn and teller get themed uh it was penn and teller's games uh smoke and mirrors and it's a game that like it's an anti-game it's like it's on purpose bad uh and they just were like what if we drove that uh it was made as a political statement. Yeah, it is. It, it's there's a lot about it, and the fact that it's what they play, I think, is very fun um, because it is like a nonsense challenge. This this uh, has been happening uh, before. Like, it ran on UStream. The first time they did it, it ran on UStream. Like, they figured it out as they've gone, and it's become a whole thing. But there's usually a lot of people involved in it, like in the production of it, all the elements of running this thing. Uh, it's a whole endeavor and there are a lot of people and like a lot of people working and uh, and it is uh, it is tough to kind of conceive of it being a thing that is going to exist this year, but they're doing it. And uh, the folks that are running it uh, r uh, live in Victoria, uh, British Columbia, Canada. Um, so they are, you know. They can access an office. They have access to an office. Uh, and they have to be strict about a lot of things. And they are because they're responsible people. But uh, it is still is a challenging thing to make sure that everyone is safe. And they can also raise a bunch of money still. So hats off to them uh, and their attempts. It's a lot to think about. We're done with a leg, y'all. We finished the leg. Uh, look how tall this is. This is a tall kit. This thing's going to be pretty beefy when, when all is said and done. Um, but we finished a leg. So now it's time to take components of the other one, but also build parts that we didn't build before and continue on. Um, but yeah, it is, uh, it is quite the charity event. I'm a big fan and a big supporter of it. Uh, cause I just think it's an, an awesome thing. So I'll be happy to lend my support a little bit next week, but mostly just hang out. And also, last year's Desert Bus was the most I've ever watched because I was working uh, customer service before that job ended. And so I was just in front of my computer all day working customer service. And then I was working odd hours. So I was up and was able to watch shifts I've normally never seen before live. And so that was just nice. It was just nice having it on while I did other things. Well, I tried not to lose my dang mind. All right.
So we need B. Get again to B. Uh, so B10. Do I already take the B10 out of this one? No, I didn't. Great. Pop this out. But yeah, uh, that is the thing that I'm looking forward to hanging out and checking out when it comes up. Uh, and of course, like as I said, we will do a raid at the end of the stream and we'll go probably end up raiding somebody who is doing a uh, an extra live stream. But uh, I'm not sure uh, where we'll end up. Um, but I feel like there'll be somebody cool streaming when the time comes and we'll be able to go and hang out with them. Ooh, new prime loot. Nope, nothing I want. Okay. Uh, I was really nervous to uh, for stuff like Extra Life when it was obviously COVID concerns will be around for a while. Uh, glad people had time to adjust and do it successfully. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing, right? The folks that, are, that do these charity streams were like, okay, how do we do this in this year? How do we make it happen? How do we get excitement built about it? How do we, you know... It's is an adjustment just like everything else is unfortunately a huge adjustment in this year. Uh, I have said this before, and I uh, I think people know um, that uh, I, I certainly miss New York City quite a bit. And today I definitely missed it. I would have definitely been out hanging out doing my thing uh, in Brooklyn. Certainly would have been you know in a mask. Hopefully, dis, you know, distance from people, but certainly partying, listening to music and hanging out like that would have been and cheering at UPS trucks, uh, USPS, I should say. But yeah. How to get people to donate. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Zoidberg, uh, part of it that is helpful is that it is like people like, you know, they're they're in a tough spots and we understand, but um, it's a. Uh, it is the hope is that folks are, that are surviving are still able to to donate and can keep it going and and keep things positive and uh, and keep the keep uh, yeah keep positive vibes and do what needs to be done like that's the hope right is that people are able to do the work but yeah you're right it is a concern that it's like I also think that people are just like. Nobody going into running a charity stream or any kind of charity thing. I think people have, I think, low expectations. And then I think you can get pleasantly surprised. And I think that's the way to go, right? Is is not like, ah, uh, well, we'll definitely, you know, like nobody's thinking we're going to do better than we did last year. If I think a lot of people are like, if we could do the numbers we did last year, that would be incredible. And I think that like people just have low expectations about their fundraising so that they hopefully are pleasantly surprised. But I think they're not like, yeah, I think nobody is like going like, oh, well, of course, we'll do as well as we did. Like, we always do better than we did the previous year, bigger and better. Now, I think people are like maybe cautiously optimistic, but uh, I think pe most folks are just like, OK, well, we'll we'll get done what we need to get done. Uh, yep. No, I think so. I think the, the support is there. And I think also a lot of folks are very grateful for having the opportunity to like have fun or like take their minds off, be entertained. I think that is the thing that like, obviously, and I, small potatoes, right? Small audience here. We're hanging out. We're having fun. But like, I do take the responsibility of the fact that I have an audience. I do take that very seriously. Uh, the fact that I am, I am doing this and a big part of me doing this is my own mental state that I really enjoy model kit building. I like hanging out with people. Uh, this is a chance to talk to folks and talk at them and with them and like communicate and like get stuff off my chest and like, you know, especially in, in times of isolation, uh, have like some sort of social interaction. Like I understand that, you know, to me, that's definitely a big part of it, but it's also a, a thing to re recognize that like I am here as an entertainment. This is an entertainment product. Uh, 
I am hopefully doing a good job with that. Sometimes I fail, but that's like anything else. But I hope that I can be a sense of it. Uh, the thing we say, it's not escapism, uh, but it is entertainment. Uh, at the e end of the day, uh, this is a model kit building stream where I talk about anime and I talk about, you know, uh, tonight I brought up taco night. And if that had been the product of conversation, if we had a long talk about what we like in our tacos and we don't like our tacos and, and all that, like that's, that's fine by me. If that's where the conversation takes us, we talk about old model kits. Thursday, we had an in-depth discussion of my advice if you were going to start a small convention, which I don't know if that benefits anyone, but it was fun for me to talk about that because it's an element of expertise. It is an element of expertise that I have. And so that was fun to talk about that stuff. And like... Uh, sure, we'll we'll do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I am here to entertain uh, and if not distract from the bad times, at least like give you a thing where like, oh, I know that, you know, Pat's not going to sugarcoat things. He's not going to pretend these things don't weird. Like, it's not that we will talk about politics. We will talk about the world. We will share our sorrows along with our joys. But uh you can come here and hang out and like, it'll be a fun time as best as I can make it fun, but it will certainly be like something, uh, an interactive fun thing. And maybe we'll learn something about a model kit or you'll just have a little bit of a, a good time for a couple hours. Uh, Harold says, I had some pretty good pizza tonight. Harold, I saw a photo of that pizza and I will agree with you. That looked pretty good. I'm glad you liked it because that did look tasty. So that's right. That's that rules. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, um, at Shepherd's Pie this week, I had some leftovers, Shepherd's Pie. Oh boy, that was very good. Good leftovers. Uh, worth the cut on my finger. And then, uh, what was it? Oh, what's going on? Oh, yeah, taco night tonight. That was fun. Enjoyed that. A little heavy. Did I need to eat four tacos tonight? I absolutely did need to eat four tacos uh, and a bunch of Spanish rice. Will I pay the price for said tacos? I mean, probably. I will probably wake up tomorrow feeling very full. I can imagine that. This will not surprise me if that is how my my uh, day tomorrow is. Or I'm like, uh, as I go to the CVS. Because I'm running out of some things that I need. So I got to go to the CVS to get some stuff. Also, going to remember to get myself a Thanksgiving card. Because uh, I feel like, and maybe you just want to get some stuff online. You don't want to go to a store. I'm going to a store. It just happens to be. But whatever. Take precautions. Wear a mask. Try to keep away from people. No problem. Or, you know, as little as problem as possible. But uh, I feel like if you are waiting to go to a store to get your Thanksgiving card, you should do that uh, sooner than later. Because I feel like like a couple days before Thanksgiving, they'll just be out of them and everything will go over to Christmas. Uh, I think every retail location, be it brick and mortar or internet, just fucking really hopes. They just, they were just like, Oh, there's not going to be a stimulus. Okay, well, maybe people will spend the money they think they're going to get from Biden as soon as he becomes president. So they'll just spend the money they don't have this Christmas. Oh, I hope people buy things for Christmas. So I feel like Christmas is going to be starting. I mean, Christmas has already started. Thanksgiving's old. Thanksgiving is like a non-starter this year. And it's just people excited about or trying to get you excited about. Uh, Christmas so because I do think a stimulus will come in January uh, but I so maybe people will like fucking bet bet on it and spend the money they don't really have expecting some sort of stimulus is that the right piece this might have been the wrong piece H15 H13 14 15 okay no yeah that is the wrong piece this is some other piece I'll deal with later. 
No person should be ever questioning other taco choices. I get that. You know, you're, you, hey, you like uh, tomatoes in your taco? You like lettuce in your taco? Um, you uh, like to get your, yourself some soft tortillas, cook them right on the stove, pop them off. You like letting that taco meat that you cooked up congeal, uh, get cold. Then scoop it in there and just heat it up in the, in the microwave for a minute. However you like to do your, your tacos, that's that's between you. That's your business. It's like live your life however you want to live your life in your taco loving ways. Um, I love a soft shell taco myself. I like a chili and cheese taco. I like a chicken, grilled chicken taco. You know, uh, like for soft, soft shells. In the house I'm in right now. That is not the thing. We are a hard shell family here. I broke away from that. Turned my back on that life. Got into got into the soft shell. Prefer the soft shell. Heating it up right on the stove. Make sure everything's nice and piping hot. So the cheese just melts that way. Maybe the cheese doesn't melt because it, was, it wasn't in the microwave. The cheese melts because everything's piping hot. And you squeeze it all up and wrap it up in that soft shell taco. And that's how the cheese melts. But that's not how things happen in this house, so I'm okay. I've eaten more hard shell tacos here than I have probably since I moved to New York. Uh, also, you know what I honestly got into was nachos. I got real into nachos. Getting myself some tortilla chips. Um, there are tortilla chips out there that are the rounds. You can get the, or you know, like perfect circle or oval shaped those are great for tortillas uh are the great for tortilla chips make yourself a big plate of nachos oh boy did that all the time and then you realize oh in a day and a half i have eaten over a pound of ground beef and a lot of shredded cheese and and uh, a whole lot of tortilla chips Oh, I am out. My bag of tortilla chips is now empty. Now I need to just, oh no, oh no. Now I just have to eat all of this taco meat and cheese. Uh, Last Rick says, dang it, I've been trying to figure out dinner and now I want some tacos. I mean, I am, look, I am sorry and I am also not sorry at all. Uh, also, as somebody who works in a brick and mortar retail location, Walgreens, it's shocking how quickly people get back uh, to the normal shopping habits. Yes. I mean, like, I'm, believe me, I am, I'm trying so hard never to go anywhere and do anything. Uh, I have been, in my attempts to get full-time employment, I have been attempting to get uh, some, like, even just contract work, short-term work, seasonal work, but uh, the th everything I've been applying for is, like, after hours and not of it none of it has been retail because i'm like let someone else work retail i want to work i want to work in the stock room uh overnight and refill everything and not and maybe have one other person uh and wear a mask the whole time like that's that's kind of been my mo uh so hopefully i will be able to uh continue that but yeah i mean some people are just you know Back to business, going about their things. Uh, I have attempted to, uh, I think CVS. Oh, yeah, my mom's birthday. I went to CVS to get a card. But, yeah, uh, this area that I'm in right now um, ha just continues to spike in its COVID cases. So I have been attempting to not go and talk to people and very much like, my parents belonged to a community thing that was going to have a big party. And they were like, we're not going to that. And I was like, yeah, because it's not 100% my place to be like, don't go to that. But if they choose not to go to it. All right, so I have to put these screws in and I have to do it tightly. But I don't want to do it too tightly that there can't be any movement because this is part of the leg. But if I don't do it tight enough, then parts won't go around it and I'll have to go take parts of uh, things apart to screw them back in so it is definitely a tight row back because these are not threaded holes for these screws 
these are not meant to be like removed later. You're like, basically I'm turning this screw into the plastic. So it is kind of tough. Also working with a, uh, a finger that I have, like I can't get the tension that I would like to have here, but it'll work out. Uh, what's the worst you ever messed up a kit? Um, uh, I really fucked up. Uh, I'd had to fix it. Uh, it was a wing zero master grade and, uh, I was getting the legs on and the front flap of it broke in half. So this was like connected and it was locked in place and it was the front parts of the skirt completely broke. And I had to go in with glue and really, really, uh, I had, yeah, I ended up getting like um, um, toothpicks and running the toothpicks on either side of the plastic to try to get the plastic to it and then taping, gluing and then taping it together to try to jury it up, to rig it up, jury rig it up. Um, and it looked pretty okay, but it was definitely not a good time and I was really stressed. Uh, but that's probably the worst of it. I mean, I've like... Uh, how long between the mistake and you being calm enough to fix it? Well, luckily, Professor Zoidberg, that was about five minutes before the end of a stream when I just broke that piece in assembly. So I just ended the stream early and then made a fuckload of noise. And then I would just put everything aside and I was like, you know what? I'm going to fix this tomorrow. And then the next day I woke up because it was like a, there was a day before the next stream woke up on that was probably a Friday or whatever. And then like sat and looked at it and then got a game plan because one of the benefits of being a, uh, a theater tech and a small theater, a black box theater tech is um, I'm very used to making it fucking work because especially in a world of like comedy where, you know, Definitely the show must go on, but also the show has to go on in a way that I did not anticipate before the night started. Uh, like I'm pretty good at crafting and getting things together and jury rigging things and like making it work. Having liquid cement now has been very helpful in my life of like trying to fix shit after it breaks. Um, but yeah, uh, also there is... Uh, Gorilla, uh, my parents have Gorilla Glue. And so, like, now I have access to that in case I really need it. Um, AK, make it look good with no money. Yes, make it work with no money. And if you can, make it look good. But definitely get it done. So, I'm pretty good at, at, at thinking like that. I am certainly will admit that I am sometimes, like, in over my head on a stream and just feeling like very frustrated if like a kit's not going together well, or I did have a mistake like that. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I will let my emotions out. I'm not always cool and collected under pressure, uh, but I do try to be, I definitely aim for cool and collected. It's just sometimes I do not succeed in that. Uh, all right. So we need H. Um, but yeah, sometimes I've been known to, get a little frustrated but I, I try to try to keep it uh try to keep it professional um we will take a pause for the cause in a moment or two i'll talk about ways you can support the channel i always like to do that uh now and again you know every stream try to ha take a moment to talk about ways you can support the channel as i continue on and of course we'll get back to building and i'll talk about anime because it's almost time for anime talk of what i've been working on but let me get let me get the parts out i need and then we'll work on this other part of the leg here uh let's see. yeah um but yeah i mean i've had experience working on that stuff and just trying to make it all work. but yeah I, I, a thing that i've learned is like at the end of a stream is often where i become very discouraged because um and you know so many people stream hours and hours and hours a day. I stream two hours a day. Why do I not go longer than two hours? I've gotten asked this now and again. It's because I become a worse model kit builder uh, after a certain period of time. I just get tired and then I get sloppy. Um, I think a lot has to do with the fact that I am talking 
constantly while doing this and I'm, you know, like keeping up with chat, there's no big thing. But I'm also like, I can only talk so much about model kits so we have other conversation and it's also like intensive. If I was playing Hearthstone, when I play Hearthstone on, you know, on a Wednesday, I will do two hours without any problem and I could go even longer. Now, occasionally I get, you know, mad about it. Um, uh, uh, but like most of the time I'm like pretty calm and, and collected, uh, when I'm playing games and I could definitely go for longer. It's just the model kit that's tough. What is the chicken and egg of kit building and theater work? So let's see. I was definitely a, uh, a helping out in school, my school theater department. I was certainly doing that because that was my entry into theater was I had bit parts. And so then I worked on tech while I had those bit parts uh, as a way to just get more involved and get people to know my name. So I certainly did that. Uh, Harold usually doesn't go by t two hours unless it's a charity stream or special event or if I'm on a roll or I've had a decent crowd. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, play to your strengths. And if you're, if you're, if you don't, you only got a few people there and you're not feeling it, then yeah, take off. Um, uh, so I started with tech and theater work and then got into model kits. I would say as far as streaming goes, specifically streaming, that is, I would be way worse at this if I didn't have years and years of, uh, improv training and, uh, theater training, um, and, uh, years and years of hosting things and running panels and being a personality, although obviously clearly not like as, you know, busy as other people are or as well known as other people are. I certainly have that. Uh, I've taken breaks while building it helps. Yes. Also, if I'm building on my own time, which I'll be honest, I don't do that much these days because I build model kits six days a week, but uh, not six days a week. What am I saying? Six hours a week. I build model kits six hours a week. But somebody was like, wait, six days. I don't, when, when else do you stream? Uh, no, I, I do six hours a week. Uh, I, so I don't really build on my own time. Uh, so when I was building for fun and I would like, you know, sit down to do a master grade and then it's like three hours in and it's like, you know what? What if I stopped for a while? What if I did something else? What if I let my eyes focus like or defocus? Like, I think that's very important when it comes to, to model kits is like giving yourself the opportunity to take a break and like focus on other things. Also, hi, Tony. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, all right. We're going to finish this step. And then we are going to take our break, our pause for the cause, uh, and talk about ways you can support the channel. I'll plug some stuff that, you know, that's going on. The usual. You should all be pretty familiar with that, but there's always somebody who isn't. So I'll also talk about that. I don't think I ever learned how, where your connection to GB and the gaming industry started. Well, I can tell you that as we, uh, uh, finish up these steps here. Uh, and, uh, so, um, I it was a fan of Giant Bomb. I liked Giant Bomb. I got tuned in by my friend Porter. Was like, hey, uh, because the One Upocalypse happened, and all of a sudden, all of my podcasts my, from OneUp.com ended. I didn't have any of those podcasts anymore. And he was like, hey, you should check out Giant Bomb. And I was like, oh, all right. So I did, and I liked them. And occasionally, when Ryan and uh, uh, and Jeff were driving, I would chat in their drives, their mixer drives, or whatever it was. It was a mixer, whatever it was. Um, because I knew they liked comedy, and they liked comedy bang bang, and since so uh, we kind of talked about that, and that was nice, and they were kind of psyched about that. Uh, then Eric Pope, the wonderful Eric Pope, my buddy Eric. Um, Eric uh, went to a show at the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater, where I was a manager and tech person. Uh, he went to see a show. I introduced myself. He was surprised to be recognized somewhere. And we started talking about that, uh, things. This is how I met. I became good friends with, um, uh, with the harmonics crew, Eric. And so that I met Aaron. And this is when everybody that some people who know harmonics, that's when everyone was working. Nick Chester was still there. John Drake was still there. 
Uh, Aaron Trice was still there. Alex had left at that point, but he was still obviously very friendly with everyone. And so I became friends with the Harmonix crew. Uh, and then because we were friends of friends, when I had a panel at PAX, I just asked Ryan to do it. Uh, and he agreed, uh, which was rad of him. Um, but Pope was going to do it. And of course he knew Pope and he knew me kind of from just being an internet person and a person that like, a thing happens sometimes where uh, it doesn't happen as much now because Twitter is so much more like it's so much less of a conversation than it used to be. But Twitter used to be more of a conversation. So, oh, I'm bantering with the harmonics people. And now I'm bantering with the giant bomb people because it's all connected of this joke that's going around. And, oh, well, now they're adding me and they're, they're following me. Okay, so now it's a conversation uh, is springing up from that because now we're all talking and whatever. And, oh, if you're cool and this person thinks you're cool, that means that, all right, we'll talk and that's fine. And then, like, uh, it kind of took off from there. And then, especially when I started getting active with uh, the comedy-ish wrestling show, uh, our video game wrestling show, then I got to spend a lot of time with those wonderful folks. Uh, and especially when they're in New York, got to be able to hang out and do stuff. And they're all real nice people. Uh, add me to the Pope branch of your friendship tree. I went to your first 404 at PAX East because Pope hyped it up on Harmonic Stream. Indeed, Pope was really good about promoting that stream. I mean, it, it look, having Ryan Davis on the panel, having Ryan and Eric and Chris Kohler brought an audience to my first panel. Uh, now, we managed to do well with it because I know what I'm doing about hosting. But I will say very much, uh, there is a reason why I almost always had a Giant Bomb person on my panel because it meant at the very least, someone from Giant Bomb was going to promote my panel on a podcast or a live stream. Uh, and that would do very well for me. That, uh, that became, uh, Loading Ready Run became kind of the secondary to that uh, in the same thing. I'm not saying they're a replacement, but as Giant Bomb stopped going to panels, uh, there is a video Graham Stark did on the Graham Stark vlogs where he was like, hey, if you're going to be at PAX, we're on these panels. And they listed their panel, and then they listed two of my panels because each of those panels had at least two members of Loading Ready Red on it. And it was like, oh, Graham just advertised to thousands of people my panels. Uh, of course, I always, as always, the idea is I want to have awesome people do my shit. And if those awesome people happen to have a larger audience than I do, and those people, and I'm doing something they would be interested in, like, I'm definitely going to tell people in the anime disc, uh, sub, you know, the channel, the anime channel in the Loading Ready Run Discord, I am definitely going to tell them about my anime panel that also features people they like. Because they will be interested in my anime panel. Uh, it's like, that's just, it's just a thing. It makes a lot of sense to do. Um, uh, of course, also, I learned too late in the cycle. Because now it's going to be harder to do. Um, just doing an anim anime panel at PAX brought in a bunch of people who did not know who I was or any of my guests. They just saw anime uh, in the, in the you know, on the website. And they were like, there's an anime panel at PAX, and I wish I had done this, like, years ago. I should have. Ugh. Anyway, we're taking a pause for the cause. It's late this week, or this stream, because I've been talking too much. And now i got to talk more. Welcome, everybody. This is the pause for the cause. This is the moment in the stream where I'm going to talk to you about ways you can support the channel. First and foremost, if you're currently a subscriber, let's see those Bear Cave, Lego... Uh, if you're Tier 2, you can put the site emote in the chat. Let the people know. I'm going to get through this pretty quick, because I think... Honestly, I think everyone that's watching right now is a subscriber, but it's still good to do that now and again. Remind you, and maybe you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm a subscriber. Oh no, my subscri subscription needs renewal. I'm going to do that right now. Um, also, I want to tell you, uh, you can use uh, um, your Prime gaming token if you have Amazon Prime synced up with your uh, Twitch. And as a reminder... I, I, you know, if you have Amazon Prime and you're not using that token on someone's streams, mine or someone else, well, that's money that you're leaving on the table. You could use that. You could use, you should use that because you're already paying for an Amazon subscription. 
oh, a private subscription, or maybe you're on a family plan, but no one's using that token, so you can use that token on me. That is the thing you could do. Uh, also, bits and coins, always appreciated. Right now, there is nobody on the sub leaderboard or the bits leaderboard. You would gift a sub if you want to do that. You could also you give bits and coins and join the top of the leaderboard. One gift sub puts you to the top. A couple bits puts you to the top. And all of that goes uh, through my Patreon, which I also have. $1, $3, $5, $10 tiers. My $3 patrons are going to be able to vote. I'm going to put the email out tomorrow or Monday. On Monday, my $3 and $5 and $10 patrons are going to decide what game I'm going to play on Wednesday. I'm going to put up a couple options for them of things to check out. And, I'll, uh, and they'll be able to vote, and that will be what I play on my bonus stream next week. Uh, if you're just joining me, I'm just taking a pause for the cause. We're going to get back to building. We still have more stream left, but I did want to take a moment to do my ad breaks here. Um, but yeah, uh, if you were gifted a sub, why not convert that into a tier one? Do it for a month. See how you feel about it. Uh, that would help me out. Um, direct donations go along with the Patreon money and my di and uh, and my Twitch subscriptions goes to buying model kits. Like I said, I just bought a, uh, a very cool kit. Um, uh, I bought the Sony PlayStation model kit. Uh, so we will be building that in the future. Looking forward to that. Um, I have an Amazon wish list, and you could buy something on the wish list. So you could say, like, Pat, don't build the things you have in your backlog. Build the things I'm sending you. I'm in control. Because if you buy something on my wish list, it jumps the queue. I've got very inexpensive Lego sets. I've got some pre-orders for some stuff. Uh, there's a Christmas Nutcracker uh, that I would like to build that you know you could buy, and then I'll build that around Christmas time. That won't jump the queue because I want to wait till the holiday. Um, uh, some high grades. I got some new high grades in there that weren't uh, available before or weren't on my list. Uh, the Astaroth Gundam, I want to point out, because that is from Iron Blood and Orphans, and it's one of the few kits from Iron Blood and Orphans I haven't built because it's a high grade. I just never got around to it. Uh, also, another high grade that looks rad is the Burning Gundam high grade from Gundam Build Fighters Try. Uh, it is basically the original Burning Gundam, but it's a modified one because it's from a, the new show. Uh, and that looks rad. Uh, I've got expensive kits in there. I've got uh, some gear towards the bottom if you want to do that as an option. Um, and as I said, you buy something there, you do that. Uh, I appreciate that. And yeah, like I said, the, 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 the stuff, if you want to subscribe, if you want to uh, send something to my PayPal or my uh, 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 coffee uh, or the Streamlabs link, that all goes to me just buying model kits and equipment. It all goes back into it. I'm good on equipment right now. I have some, as I said, I have some equipment at the bottom, but uh, also an alternative to Amazon is getting a gift card from USA Gundam Store. Uh, you go there, you buy a gift card, it sends you a code in your email. You then go on to Twitter and send me a DM and go, okay, like, hey, I got you this code. Here you go. Then I will use that and I will buy a kit from USA Gundam Store. Or you could be like, hey, uh, which happened before. Crazy Like Fox was like, hey, here's enough money to get that cup noodle kit. Pre-order that cup noodle kit. And I did. Or you could just be like, here's $20 to USA Gundam Store. And I'll put that towards buying a kit from there. Uh, and it'll still jump the queue. I have a Discord. You could join my Discord if you wanted to. We are going to get back to building in just a minute or two. Let me just get through these last couple things. Join my Discord. It's rad. Um, uh, my bearing the list this week, Pet Bears Anime Club is two weeks old. I got a new one coming out on Monday. Watch the new one on Monday. If you didn't watch the live stream last Wednesday, watch that one on Monday. Uh, or this Wednesday, I should say. Bearing the list that came out this week. Good bearing the list. Pokemon Final Evolutions of Starters. So it is the starting of Pokemon, one of the, you know, your your fire, your grass, or your water type. What's their final evolution look like? Uh, I did that. I feel good about that one. I think that one turned out pretty good. We're going to get back to building. I'm going to drink a little water, and then we're going to talk about anime I watched since Thursday's stream, and we're getting back into building, and we'll finish off this second leg here uh, and talk about some uh, anime. But let me drink a little water here and go to the overhead. All right. So, 
despite it saying on the list of anime that I'm going to talk about, it does include I'm Standing on a Million Lives. I ended up not watching that episode because, I said this before, uh, so I'll just talk about this briefly. Standing on a Million Lives has, like, um, I don't think it, it is ready to handle the the uh, emotion that it is it is definitely going to be dealing with. Uh, and I was just not interested in bad vibes. Although, a clip from this episode involved some nonsense with some traps. So I was like, oh, maybe it won't be that heavy. It'll actually not be that heavy of an episode. So I might go back and watch it uh, for Monday. But I did not watch it yesterday or today. Just wasn't feeling it. That happens now and again. This is not... It's always weird because this is this is on purpose. This kind of like bend here. You can see it in the photo. But getting this piece to sit in here is not working right. I don't know why. Nope. Just not doing what I want it to do. There we go. All right. That linked up the way I needed it to. Uh... The rockets are so weird in here. Uh, would you prefer the Camaro or the Porsche? Uh, Princess Zoidberg, uh, either one would be great if you want to buy that. These are Lego sets I'm on uh, Amazon, uh, my Amazon wish list. I think either would be fine. I think they're both rad as hell looking uh, um, uh, Lego sets. Uh, but yeah, whichever you would prefer. Um, they're both They're about the same. Uh, there's a few more. Uh, Camaro pieces, and I kind of like that fire extinguisher I think it's supposed to be, but like, I mean, the, I don't know, whatever, whichever. Uh, I do like, I would like to see those tiny little cones, so I think either would be great, and I appreciate that. Um, that's very generous of you, if you, if that's something you'd like to do. Uh, I would be happy to build those. All right, we got to get our F pieces here. Uh, I try to have, you know, Lego sets that are pretty reasonably priced as well, as well as model kits that are kind of on the inexpensive side. I mean, high grades are, are, you know, can be pricey, but they can also be reasonably priced here and there. So I try to try to mix those in. Uh, all right. I have to talk about it anyway. So I'm caught up on Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen was a show that I kind of bounced off of because I didn't like that the main character felt very much uh, the main character. I should say his name is uh Yuji uh, felt very much like another Ichigo from Bleach. Uh, and I was just kind of like, and it definitely does take a lot uh, from Bleach, which is funny because uh, Bird the Witch, a show that ran three episodes, it was basically a movie they broke up into three episodes. Bird the Witch was this season, and that's in the same universe as Bleach, which is weird because that's about witches, pretty much, uh, and dragons. But that's part of the Bleach universe, which I didn't know before. Uh, and now I know, and that's weird. Um, anyway, this show... Hey, I got caught up on the show, folks, and I want to just say this right now. Uh, there's an episode in this show where a main character fucking dies. This dude is dead. He is a major character. He is the major character of the show. He dies. Also in that episode... A panda man shows up. This is a person that speaks. He is a panda wearing a school uniform. And his name is Panda. And a character is like, you're just going to gloss over the fact that that's a panda talking to us right now? So a panda shows up in the same episode that Yuji fucking dies. Now, to be fair, Yuji is not dead. Yuji, Yuji is just, Yuji had to make a deal with the demon inside of him, and it's going to be a whole thing, but he was, his heart got ripped out, and we definitely, it definitely seemed like, oh, this fucking dude is dead, so that's a lot, anyway, the plot thickens on this show, uh, they're going to keep Yuji uh, being alive a secret, so that he can get powered up, because he definitely got set up to take a fall, so they're going to be like, okay, or what are we going to know? We're going to on the head and cockpit. So this is the headpiece. All right, so we finished our legs. Now let's move on that headpiece as I talk about um, 
a thing here in the show. Um, okay, so he's going to learn spear, how to use curse energy. Uh, some of that stuff is you're born with, so he can't use that parts of it. But he can use, I need A and D. He can use, uh, you had me at Panda. Uh, look, Tony, it's a good show. This is a good shonen. I'm digging it quite a bit. Uh, it's got a lot of heart. UG is like a good character. He's like a good guy. So I'm on board for that. Um, Megami is definitely like, he's definitely a Sasuke, but he also seems to actually care. Uh, he comes on board pretty quickly, so he's less of a Sasuke in that respect. Uh, but he's definitely like a rival but a rival that has, like, a lot of respect for what's going on. So I appreciate that. Um, and, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, so he's going to work on some... So he does mention Kamehameha's and spirit bombs and how he, wa and sp he wants to learn the spirit gun and a lot of nonsense. But he's got to train up. He's got to learn how to use uh, curse energy so he can fight because most people at his school or they're learning how to you know banish demon or uh yeah spirits and stuff most of the folks that he's going to be uh training with or against um they don't have any uh they don't have as much uh close combat abilities but they have a lot of spirit energy and they've been trained and they can use curses which he can't use any curses right now although eventually he will most likely start to be able to use curses uh, but he has close combat training, so he has he has a, a leg up on them. So he's got to learn how to unlock some curse energy. Basically, it's at this point, it's just easier to say like he's got to he's got to power up his chi so that he can uh, fight better, and he won't lose fights as easily. Uh, so that's the big that's a big push of this episode is him figuring that stuff out. Uh, while his uh, compatriots, his for, you know, his teammates who don't know he's alive, fight and train as well. Um, and then also, there's a guy named Ghetto. Uh, Ghetto? He, not Ghetto, but G-E-T-O. He is... He's definitely a, a fighter like the rest of them. He's like definitely somebody who is trained in... Uh, is, this, is this D-17? This is not D-17. This is not D17. I picked this piece up and it's the wrong piece. I'm getting sloppy. Cause that's C. I picked I that's C17, y'all. Not D17. I was like, this doesn't look right. Because it wasn't right. Um There's a guy, he's he's conspiring with this the to to kill the teacher. Okay. I earlier kind of jokingly said Sasuke, but um Gojo, who is a, the teacher of uh these students. That's fucking Kakashi. That's Kakashi Sensei from Naruto. Instead of having an eye patch, he has a high collared jacket, so you don't see his mouth or face, or, or you only see half his face. Uh, but Gojo is like, is definitely Kakashi. It is very like on the nose and very obvious, and but it's still kind of fun. Because he seems to be very lighthearted, but also has, like, serious, like, fighting. Anyway, they're going to try to kill the dude, which is, you know, rough. These spirits are going to try to kill him or imprison him or something. So he's going to be dealing with that in the next episode. Because nothing slows down in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, moving on to Rail Romanesque. Um, so this show is Rail Lords. They're artificial young intelligence of girls who control trains and I don't know why it's just cute and it's fun and I like it um uh the fangirl rail the, the girl not fangirl the fangirl there's a girl with a fang she's one of those kind of bubbly energy girls got a lot of a lot of positive vibes to her um she pitches the idea of merch of glass cut water bottles that look like water gauges because her region is known for fancy glass. They're all excited about that. They think it was good. It was a good team effort. Meanwhile, um, 
the uh, two other railroads are checking out the gift shop of Hachiroku, uh, who is the well, the most well-known railroad, and uh, one of them is overly dramatic and it's cute. Also, she's named for the eighty-six, which is like the most prestigious train uh, in Japan in this alternate tr uh, reality and also in real reality. But it's also uh, Hachiroku. It's eighty-six. It's an it's it's not an initial D reference, but it might as well be, as far as I'm concerned. It's like it's the eighty-six. It's the name of uh you know the the main car, the A eighty-six. It's like oh man, I don't know. It has nothing to do with rail lords, but it made me like think about that, and I think that was fun. The best show this season with a dog and a cat every day is fun. Had a new episode. This was three stories in one because it's like a minute and a half, but they're very short stories. The dog and cat are on a futon or on the, the owner's futon and she can't uh, sleep as she wants to, but it's still cute that they're all there. But the dog makes room for her to sleep and the cat stretches out even more. And she was like, I, I, I knew that was going to happen. I'm not surprised this happened. Uh, the second of the three little stories was um, dog doesn't notice getting a shot at the vet because the dog is just so happy to meet all these people and talk to them. Uh, and the cat is not fucking happy about it. Not happy being at the vet. Uh, and then the dog chases a ball and has fun with the ball and the cat rips apart a teddy bear and that's how the cat plays because the cat and dog are different you see that is the big thing about with a dog and a cat every day is fun the big element of the show is cats and dogs are different y'all and one and the the dog has a very nonsense happy voice and the cat is a cat uh and is just got a lot of vicious evil energy and has the voice actor of what sounds like a Yakuza boss and that rules um okay so we gotta put uh oh we gotta put the eye on here Ooh, we're gonna move on to the eye getting more done with the face uh cats do not like the vet this is accurate yes I mean this cat is just like the boss of the place and the dog is just kind of a goof a love a lovable goof uh, and then we'll get into sport climbing girls. Hey, if you were like, Pat, I'm not sure if this is a sports anime or not. Well, it started with uh, uh, the girl who is nicknamed Black Panther, who is named Masumi, uh, who is the cool and collected. She's setting the pace for the rest of her team. She's like leading by example. She's like trying to do her best. She has a little bit of a breakdown because uh, she came in second and she doesn't know if she's going to be pull off a victory today in the semifinals. And she's doubting herself. And then she's also remembering when she was not as strong because she was once a track star and failed. And she doesn't want to fail this time. So this is definitely a sports anime. Uh, and then, let's see. Uh, uh, the ballet girl, whose name I can't remember, tries to talk trash for Kasumi or Konomi. She tries to talk some major trash, but Konomi just like, is just like, I don't think notices that she is trying to, uh, you know, intimidate her. She's just like, I'm really psyched about this. I'm doing this for the, you know, the other team. And I've only been doing this for two months. Uh, and let's see. Okay, so um, the shoe lady, the lady who was really psyched about shoes from uh, a previous episode, she's there. She helped work on these puzzles, uh, the problems. We're going to call them problems. Yeah. So basically, the semifinals, you start with the first problem. You have five minutes to complete it. You move on to the next one. Someone else starts new. And uh, I think, like, yeah, I think, like, if you can't solve it, you're out, I think. Yeah, if you can't solve the one, you're out. So you end wherever you are. Or you go to the back of the line. I can't remember. I think it's you're out if you if you can't solve it in five minutes. So a lot of pressure. 
Konami aces her three her first three problems with no no problem. She she analyzes it. She takes her time. Most people climb and then like fuck up, but learn as they get used to the problem. She's just analyzing it and doing it in one shot. So it's incredible. And everyone kind of recognizes like, oh, this girl is a savant at this. Holy shit. So they're all kind of interested in this. It's it's odd. It's not what should be happening. But is she getting too psyched up? We're going to find out in the next episode because she seems uh, like my guess is from 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 like the vibe is her body's not going to because that's the real thing is like her body might give out because she hasn't really trained her body up enough for, you know, she's only doing it for a couple months. But I think she's going to just like her brain is just she's going to have like uh, like an issue where she's just going to like lose her concentration. Brain's just going to stop working right. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I, that's my guess. I don't know if that's going to happen. But, uh, oh, they're really also in this episode really playing up the she sees a game. She sees every stage as like a puzzle that she needs to solve. Uh, she's, they're really playing up that element of, of puzzle solving, of her like analyzing a thing and it being like a real, like a video game puzzle that she has to solve. Uh, they're really, they really, really went hard on that in this episode. Really tried to play that up. Uh, otherwise, it was good. Uh, yeah, other people aren't having a good time, to- aren't having as good a time, including, uh, I do like that about the ballet girl, where she is like, um, she considers Konami like a rival from their ballerina days, uh, but Konami like definitely does not consider her a rival at all and do- is like, Kind of just like, oh yeah, we knew each other then. Like it has not, it has not occurred to her that they that they have a rivalry, which I like. Uh, I don't think it will be a physical thing. I think she's just gonna have to mentally burn out because she never turns off even during the breaks. Yes, I think that's what they're definitely setting up. I think you said it better than I could there, Lashbrook. Like it won't. Yeah, uh, the the assumption would be that it's her endurance. She won't be able to keep up because she hasn't trained that long. But in reality, it's be that she's been thinking things too thoroughly and she's too much of her brain, her analytical brain uh, that she'll have a burnout. Trying to get this to lock in place here and it is being kind of frustrating. Okay. Sorry folks, this shouldn't take too long to figure out. I'm just going to Try to get this lined up right in here. Let's try. Let's try it from the top. We'll we'll pop pop, pop it in the top first and go from the top. Um, but yeah, that's that's the anime I've been watching. Uh, like I said, I didn't watch them standing on a million lives. Uh, I'll probably watch that for Monday. But I did want to chat about the shows. Uh, not quite the same, but I've definitely seen at the end of a long MTG tournament. Yeah, sometimes you just like over focus. You're just like you're not giving yourself a chance to breathe and. Things don't work the way you want them to. Uh, she hasn't had that problem yet. Her problem has been that she could mentally see where she needed to go and what she needed to do, but she hasn't been able to, but she wasn't able to in her first meet, like physically do the thing that she wanted to do. Her body couldn't keep up with her brain. And it will be interesting to see if that's a problem now where her tech, her technique is kind of genius, but she can't back it up. Because I don't expect that she's going to like... Well, also, the preview episode... Or the preview said the next episode is like failure of a climber. So, I assume she's the one who's going to fail. It's totally possible it could be somebody else. But it would be kind of weird if it was like, yeah, this other person failed. I assume this will be another learning experience for her. I'm having some trouble here with, with this, folks. I think it's it's just my big hands here. Having trouble getting this piece lined up right. This is the eye, and it should you know, be able to move around a bit. So it's going to get set in there. But, but also be able to move around. Did I put this piece on wrong? I think I might have. I think that's actually the problem. I think I figured out what the problem was. Oops. 
but yeah, uh, I think Sports uh, Climbing Girls is good. It's not my favorite show this season, but I think it's pretty good. Um, I think By the Grace of the Gods might be my favorite show. It's just a very, like, cozy show. Hello, Northern Lights. Welcome, welcome. Uh, coming in towards the end of the stream. We got a little time left here building, working on the uh, camphor. Uh, happy to have you here. And yes, I had assembled this piece kind of wrong. And I think now I don't want to count my chickens before they hatch. But yes, I got this. Okay, we're good now. I piece has been put. Uh, let's not re-answer my what's the worst you ever messed up kit live. No, it wasn't that. It was just that um, I was like, oh, this piece isn't lining up properly. Oh, because I'm putting it in backwards. Uh, that is, you know, occasionally an issue when you're working on an older kit. Like this kit doesn't have like a lot of explanations of things. There's not a lot of English to back it up. You're kind of going just by like looking at the photos and doing your best. Uh, I do know what a camphor is supposed to look like, and that does help out a lot. I think that is, that goes a long way when you're working on a kit and you're a little unfamiliar with, with like, what is this supposed to be? And what is this supposed to do? I'm a little co confused. Like if you, if you've had a chance to like, or you, if you're familiar with the show it's from or the kit itself, you know, like you, you know, the mobile suit, uh, you can usually make up for some of those issues you might have. Uh, we need C here, which is this one. Uh, I had the same issue earlier on my Rogue Strike. Couldn't figure out why something kept falling off. It was backwards. Yep, that happens. Uh, also, your brain is doing multiple things at once, like building around the stream. Yes, especially, I will say this. I think having the, uh, the anime talk in the second hour is good because generally, by the time we get to our second hour, I have run out of things that I decided we were going to talk about on stream, and conversation has kind of stalled a little bit. Also, I kind of wrap up conversation about a certain topic or two before we get into, you know, me talking about ways to support the stream, take the break. And then it's like a nice thing to be like, and now we'll do this instead of like, now what were we talking about before? Um, but that does also mean that as we get towards the end of the stream, I am like checking my notes because I started taking notes about what, what I want to talk about because I would forget things that I wanted to bring up. But that also means that I am distracting because I'm like, looking at my notes and looking back and then looking at you as I'm building. So I am uh, definitely, I definitely can get distracted towards the end of the stream. And also it is, you know, it is just also the end of the stream. And that is sometimes I am a little off by the time when we get there. Uh, that's why I only do the two hours because I do get loopy towards the end. Uh, but we will, uh, we will wrap up in a bit. We got a few more minutes left. I at least want to get the head done, which we're, we're very close to getting the head done. Uh, if not the chest, uh, there's a lot to this chest. There's a lot of big pieces to it, but, uh, we'll certainly get, uh, pretty far with stuff on this kit. Uh, but we continue. Oops. And uh, we are going to raid. I don't, as uh, I think as I said before, I don't know who we're going to go and raid, but we will go and give somebody a raid tonight because it is nice to spread the love. We always raid at the end of the stream. I'm going to try to get somebody maybe who's doing some extra life stuff or something uh, to give show them some love. Uh, um, but we'll, yeah, we'll see who's available, who's around and uh, try to spread some positivity and, and hang out. But I also know that, you know, for some of y'all, you're on the West Coast, you're in the middle of the country, you know, it's not that late, especially if, if people that are out on a Saturday, you know, it's Saturday night, so you're also looking for something else to do. Uh, and there are other people that are like 11 o'clock, that's not late either, and I get you, I'm that same way. For me, it's a matter of, uh, I am, uh, I'm often like, I just need to cool down after stream, so I try to do that, I try to go in and watch something and hang out, uh, relax a little bit. We had a sticker at the very end of uh, Thursday stream. We've only had one sticker on this kit so far, and that was the end of Thursday stream. And then our second sticker shows up, and it's the end of this stream. And that is rude. That's rude. We're still going to do it because we want to finish the head so it looks rad, but uh, it's just rude. 
It's rude that I have to put the sticker on. Uh, also, this era, these stickers are not numbered. They have symbols that mean something to people who are not me. And that's that's frustrating. But also, it's fucking pretty cool that these stickers work uh, with no problem. These stickers that came out in the year 2001 when this kit came out. That's pretty good. Yeah, I think I I would I would not disagree with you, Professor. Uh, there are plenty of people who are very tired right now. But I definitely get kind of tired towards the end of the stream. Because it is, yeah, it's not just building. Because, you know, some people are like, how... How could you possibly take two streams to work on a uh, a high grade? High grades take no time at all. And it's like, well, yeah, if I wasn't talking or looking at chat or like talking about things I'm passionate about and taking a pause, like, yeah, if I wasn't doing any of those things, it wouldn't take too long to get through a model kit, like a high grade. Sure. But that's not what we're doing here. It's going to take a little while to do that stuff, to do all these things. I mean, when 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 we build our high grade or, uh, or uh, the Sony PlayStation, that's going to be one stream because those things come together pretty easy. Uh, it depends on how much stickers are involved. The cup noodle like was a lot of stickers, so that was a bit involved. But the other one was not as involved. All right. Our head is done. We have completed the head here. We have to build a chest. We have the chest coming up. We've got to do the braiding for that. We've got the shotgun and the uh, the chain mine uh, whip, the chain whip, which is all mines. The bazooka have to get made. Uh, two bazookas, I should say. The two bazookas. Uh, the beam saber, uh, the the leg uh, grenade launchers, all kinds of different gear that still needs to get made. So we've got we've got more. Uh, oh yeah, well, so I, uh, the Saturn was really fun. Uh, but good luck to you, Zoberg. Uh, my number one tip is, um, if you haven't built the kit in a while. Uh, when you take the the lid for the kit, because it comes together pretty good. When you're building the lid, there, you know, it's like going to be the top is going to fold down, right? And it's going to, you know, it's a circular part. There's a little bit of a, a piece that sticks out. I almost clipped that piece off, but that piece you need for it to be able to lock into place on it. So make sure you don't, like, usually when you clip stuff, you want to, you know, make sure that it's smooth. That is supposed to stick out. That's my one pro tip. That and just take your time with uh, the stickers on the disc. Uh, because there's one disc it comes with and a, and a bunch of different game stickers to choose from to put on there. So uh, just take your time with it. It's got a lot of stickers, um, but it's a great little kit. And it comes together really well. It's a really fun kit to put together. All right, folks, so we are going to go and raid. Uh, we don't have a lot, a, a lot of, uh, of party people here tonight, but we are going to go and give a raid to somebody. So let's go back over here. We got done. We got the legs done. We got the head done, which is rad. So we got some work done today. But we're going to go and find somebody awesome to go and give a little love to. Uh, and uh, we're going to go uh, We're gonna go raid uh, my friend Will. Uh, not that Will Smith uh, is currently playing Spelunky 2, part, uh, doing extra life stuff. Uh, I know Will... Had a health thing this week. Um, I think he's all right, but um, uh, he. I know that he ran into a. Uh, oh, he is on a. Uh, is he on a break? I guess no. He's not on a break. We're good. Oh, and his daughter's hanging out. That's fun. So we're gonna go raid Will. Feel free to come along in this raid. If you don't want to come on the raid, you don't have to. But it'll be great to go and see, and maybe we can boost some energy and give some like momentum by hanging out there. So let's go for the raid. As always, folks, I will be streaming again uh, on Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern, continuing with this kit. We got to build. We got to keep working on it. We got a lot of components, but we got more to do. So feel free to come along this raid. I'll see you in the next build with Bear. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Appreciate it very much, uh, bro.
Brozart, and I'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.